What's up my stat stars? When it comes to experimental design, there are four huge pillars that all well-designed experiments must have. And the second of those principles or pillars is randomization of the experimental units to your treatment groups. So let's just say we have 60 subjects ready to go and we have two experimental or treatment groups. All right, how do we determine who gets what? It must be determined completely at random. So that is a huge pillar. Now, why does randomization even matter? Well, there's all different types of extraneous or confounding variables that are out of our control, things that researchers cannot make the same for everybody. So this is where we put our full faith and trust into the randomization process to evenly disperse those other extraneous variables into both treatment groups. That way, both treatment groups are as similar as possible, meaning very different within. A sprinkle of everything in treatment group one, a sprinkle of everything in treatment group two. That way, both groups are nice and mixed up and very, very similar between. The only difference is gonna be the treatment that we give them. And if there's gonna be three treatment groups, well, then we're just gonna have to, again, use that randomness to make sure that 20 go to group one, 20 go to group two, and 20 go to group three. That way, we get a nice mix into all three groups. So randomization is not not just for fun or something that we do because it sounds good, it helps us to roughly evenly disperse all those other extraneous variables that we cannot control for.